Welcome to EPG Pachala lecture series on data analytics. In this session on data analytics, we will continue discussing data visualization techniques for variables that is involving more than two. So, the learning objectives of this session are to understand various data visualization techniques for more than two variables and know about the other data visualization techniques which are widely used for understanding data. The first type of visualization technique which is used for visualizing more than two variables is pairwise scatter plot. This is similar to a scatter plot, but instead you are going to have a matrix of scatter plots which highlights linear correlations between multiple variables. So, we will be having multiple combinations, pairwise combinations of variables and generate multiple scatter plots for each and every type of combination. This is particularly helpful in pinpointing specific variables that might have similar correlations. This pairwise scatter plots will work very effectively for numerical data, but it may not be very effective on categorical data. So, if you are going to make use of categorical data, better it is good to convert the categorical data into numbers and then use the pairwise scatter plot for visualizing them. Take a look at the scatter plot given here. So, here they have taken the data set called iris data set which is available in the UCA data repository. They have taken the four attributes sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Similarly, along the row also you can find the same four variables. Each and every cell in this matrix which comprises of 4 by 4 highlights a specific combination. If you take this region in the pairwise scatter plot, it provides a scatter plot between the variable sepal length and petal width. If you take another region, say for example, this region, it provides a combination of the petal length and then the sepal width. So, now when you take a look at each and every cell, it highlights combinations of various pairs of variables and the dependency or interdependency between these pair of variables are highlighted in the given scatter plots. When you take a look at the diagonal, you may find correlation between the same element. So, this is between petal width and petal width. Therefore, here the histogram of that corresponding variable if it is petal width mean histogram of petal width is highlighted here. So, along the diagonal element you can find the histogram. Now, what is the use of this pairwise scatter plot? The pairwise scatter plot will help the expert or the audience to get in one single point of time various dependencies or independencies between combination of variables which is available in the given data set because when you are trying to analyze using a simple scatter plot, you will have to generate scatter plots for every pairwise variable and then you will have to make a comparison which may be difficult, but when you make use of this single pairwise scatter plot, you can get all these combinations in a single shot and hence decision making on selection of variables will be very easy. There is another type of graph called trellis graph are also called as a lattice plot. Trellis graphs are also a type of graphical display which displays a variable or the relationship between the variables that is conditioned on one or more other variables. Now, let us take an example. You will find the cases of diabetes that is plotted with respect to various regions. So, along the x and y axis, you have the regions and the diabetes. Now, if this is going to be visualized as a single scatter plot diagram, then you may find various cases of diabetes highlighted by different colors. So, the color blue indicates say the northeast region, the color in red indicates the south region and the color in green color indicates the north central region and so on. But from this single scatter plot, 
we may not be in a position to directly derive any relationship between the two variables that is the region and the diabetes. In case if you can visualize this by introducing more other variables that is if you can take the region wise data and plot with respect to various regions then you will get a plot this is called as a lattice plot or a trellis graph. So, here you can find different latex of cuboids and each and every cuboid over here highlights a specific information here in this given scenario this lattice highlight two cuboids one for the north central region another for the west region. So, the information here in these two cuboids are nothing but the scatter plot of diabetes with respect to the region. Now, when you take a look at these two diagrams and compare you may find the lattice plot is said to be conveying more information rather than the simple scatter plot. So, by means of analyzing a given variable and its relation with respect to another variable we will have to introduce two or more other variables and when you visualize that it may result in a lattice cube like this. The third type of plot is star plot which is one more type of plot used for visualizing more than two variables or a data set involving more than two variables. This was introduced by Chambers in the year 1983 and this plot was mainly used for multivariate data. So, how it predicts and how it showcases the given data is it actually represents every single observation in the form of a star. Typically the star plots are generated in a multi plot format with many stars combined together or ordered in some sequence. Star plots are used to examine the relative values. These relative values are associated to single data points. For example, if point 3 is large for variable 2 and 4, but small for variables 1, 3, 5 and 6, then you can make use of smaller points or dissimilar points for the purpose of representing that in a star plot way. Star plot actually contains sequences of equiangular spokes that is called as radii and each spoke represents one of the variable. The data length of the spoke is proportional to the magnitude of the variable and the maximum the magnitude indicates the maximum length for the spoke. A line is drawn connecting these values highlighted in each and every spoke. So, when you take a look at the connected lines then it gives you a visualization as though it looks like a star and hence it got its name star plot. So, the example over here is a star plot for variables involving sales, marketing, development, customer support, information technology and administration. So, that indicates the spendings related to budgets allocated for various departments in a given organization. The allocated budget is highlighted by means of the blue line and the spent budget is highlighted by means of the red line. Now, the allocated budget is say for example, 50,000 dollars for marketing it is say 45,000 dollars for development it is 60,000 dollar and for customer support it is 25,000 dollar. Now, when you take a look at the amount that is spended you can find for the marketing the amount spent was just 20,000 dollar, but the amount that was spent in actual for marketing was 45,000 dollar. Now, along this spoke so this line this vertical line is called as a spoke and each and every value like 10,000 dollar 20,000 dollar till 60,000 dollar are the lines which indicate the radii. Now, when you take a look at this spoke you can identify 
the difference between the expenditure and the allocation. Now, wherever you find a larger variation, you can identify, you can understand that extra or additional amount has been spent for that particular department. So, what exactly we can observe or understand? We can observe that there are certain points that are clustered at one end and these clustered observations need to be used for the purpose of decision making. Sometimes we can find outliers like the one highlighted here, where the amount spent is very large when compared with the amount that has been allocated. So, this region can be treated as an outlier or in certain region we can find the amount that is provided that is allocated is very high, but the actual amount that is spent is very low. So, we can also identify here which particular axis or which particular vertical line spoke is dominant. In terms of loss marketing can be understood as a spoke and in terms of positive value development can be identified as a positive spoke. So, we can say marketing is a dominant variable for promoting a product and development is another prominent variable in terms of less expenditure. Such kind of observations can be easily made with the help of a star plot. The next type of visualization technique is parallel coordinates. Parallel coordinates are one common technique by which we visualize high dimensional geometry and we analyze multivariate data. So, what happens is given a data set with n dimensional space, we actually create a backdrop that consists of n parallel lines highlighting the n dimensions and all these parallel lines are vertical and equally spaced. Now, a point in the n dimensional space is represented as a polyline with vertices on the parallel axis. So, the parallel axis are the n parallel lines and a point is going to be represented as a polyline cutting or intersecting these parallel axis. This visualization when you take a look at it, it is similar to a time series visualization. So, what is that we can observe or understand is we can understand that some form of trend or time series analysis can be done using the parallel coordinate visualization. Consider the data set the same iris data set taken from UCA repository, wherein the petal length and width are taken and sepal length and sepal width are taken. So, petal is a non reproductive part of the flower and sepal is the non reproductive part of the same flower. Now, based on the petal length and width and the sepal length and width, they are trying to classify what type of flower it is or what type of species it is. Now, the four types of parameters sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. I told the four attributes are going to be the four dimensions and these four dimensions are going to be represented as four vertical lines, which are going to be spaced equally or at equal distances. So, for the sepal length draw a vertical line and plot the point 5.1 along the axis. Similarly, for sepal width draw a vertical line plot the corresponding value 3.5. For the petal length 1.4 and for the petal width another vertical line and plot the point 2.2. Now, when you take a look at these vertical lines, the range of values highlighted in this vertical lines vary according to the values taken by the corresponding attributes. So, here you may find 1.4 is at the lowermost part and here 3.5 is at the uppermost part. This is because of the range of values taken by this axis and by this axis. Now, when these data points are connected that is we will have to draw a line intersecting the data points plotted in these vertical axes. Now, it provides a polyline. So, this is a polyline. So, here we have a parallel coordinate highlighting four dimensions and a polyline connecting 
various points along this four coordinates. Now, when you apply the same technique for plotting all the values for the sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width, this is how the given visualization of iris data will look like. Here the encircled values are the examples that we discussed in the previous slide. So, this is a parallel visualization with which we can understand how one particular variable may be interconnected with the other variable. Here the number of variables is more than 2. So, using the polyline you can get to know what is the range of relation between 2 or more variables. Apart from these visualization techniques, there are other models for visualization proposed based on human perception. So, in 1984, William Cleveland and Robert McGill, they actually conducted a study and published an article about visualization. This article says that there are various parameters that may be given high preference when humans try to perceive the content. So, they actually conducted various surveys with various visualized contents and based on that they have identified that positioning of the objects along various axes or scaling of these objects along various scales is considered to be the first and foremost thing that may be used for perceiving a data by a human. Now, when you take a look at the first diagram, here you have two black dots that are separated by a scale. So, the scale is 0, 5 and 10. Here the difference between these two data points is say smaller in case if the same scale is reduced instead of 5, 5 units, if you are going to make use of 10 units, then the two data points will appear to be closer. In case if these two data points are not going to be aligned, that is you have two separate scales which are not aligned, then how these two data points may look visually is, is this how. So, you have one data point which is a value greater than 5 and another data point whose value is less than 5 and these two are non-aligned scales. So, now if the same data point is represented using a common scale, it looks like this. If the same data point is represented using a non-aligned scale, then it looks like this. So, the perception in this scenario is completely different from that of the perception from the given scenario. Similarly, for length, here we have drawn a straight line, but the length of this line is shorter when compared with the length of this line. Otherwise, both are going to represent a straight line. So, the positioning here also matters and the positioning also indicates that the length of the straight line is smaller. When you take a look at this diagram, if along the z axis a variable called depth is introduced and assume this particular straight line which is also having the same height as this straight line if placed at a farther distance then as a human when we perceive we may think this straight line is of shorter length when compared with this straight line the only thing is the distance that separates them otherwise in real world it may be the same heighted or lengthed straight lines. Similarly, the other objects over here also tells the perception may vary based on the direction, based on the angle, based on the area, volume, curvature and also based on the shading. So, what is that we are trying to say here is positioning along a common scale and other parameters as listed here in this chart also helps in providing different visualizations for different scenarios based on the context. Now, also you should think from the perspective of the audience and you should understand how an audience will perceive if 
objects in the given environment are presented in this fashion. So, these two things must be considered first before finalizing the actual visualization for the given data. Other techniques are pie charts and 3D plots, color shadings, glyphs which are nothing but geometric shapes highlighting a given data, vector fields highlighting arrows, streamlines, particle tracing etcetera, textures, animations, virtual reality and data sonifications are also other visualization techniques that may be used for understanding the given data. Pie chart and 3D chart, they both are very popular, but in other term they are also two dimensional visualization only. So, the pie charts are very popular and actually it gives you clear indication of the proportions in the given data set. So, human perception is not good in terms of understanding the arcs, rather it is very good in understanding the area covered under an arc. So, bar plots, histograms are usually better, but they may not look very pleasing when compared with pie chart. An example for pie chart is highlighted here. So, from the pie chart <coughs> we can see the meat consumption, the various types of meat and consumption. From this diagram we can understand beef meat is consumed in large when compared with rest of the meat in New Zealand. The area under the arc indicates the proportion which is the meat consumption proportion. The 3D plot is actually the 3D visualization of two dimensional bar diagrams. So, when you take a look at the given bar diagram, you can find it is plotted between two axes x and y, but it is a three dimensional view of the two dimensional plot. Otherwise, it is going to be the same. When you take a look at this three dimensional plot, though we see the third dimension being involved say for example, it can be depth, it provides a very effective way by which you can convey the actual data. Sometimes you can even find the 3D plot as a spinning two dimensional plot, wherein we can make use of different types of projections onto two dimensional plots and then make it look as though it is 3D. Color shading is also another important technique. When you are making use of color shadings, you will have to identify different types of shades of color for representing say either a proportion or a particular variables value. The important step there is identifying the appropriate choice of color is very important. For example, if you have an hypothetical landscape dynamics highlighting the presence of fire, but in actual this is how it is available. If you are applying proper shadings of color, you can find so the proper shades of color say a darker shade of red clearly indicates whether fire is present or not in a given hypothetical landscape. Here also you are actually trying to highlight fire, but the shade of color which is used is not properly highlighting the information. Therefore, it looks as though the information is suppressed. So, proper choice of color matters a lot for color shading. Glyphs are geometric shapes or another type of visualization method. Here you are going to make use of glyph which is a very simple shape which is used for representing a position in a space. We make use of colors and size for representing the position of say a given data either in a two dimensional or in a three dimensional space. The shapes can be a sphere, cube, it can be tetrahedron, it can be arrows, boxes etcetera, etcetera. Let me show you a simple glyph example. So, the chart here is actually a visualization of coal combustion. The spheres here are used for representing the glyphs. Each glyph that is each sphere is a coal particle. The size of the glyph or the sphere represents the particle mass. So, the size is the sphere's size is high means then the particle mass is also high and the color over here indicates the temperature. So, now you can get a complete picture of 
what are the various masses of coal particles and the corresponding temperature associated to these particles during coal combustion. So, which is clearly and very effectively highlighted using a glyph representation. Next type is vector fields. In vector fields, we are easy to indicate two important parameters, one is the direction, another one is magnitude. Suppose, if your data contains a directional component, then it is good to make use of arrows. Magnetic fields, vector fields, etcetera are represented using such arrows. Using appropriate colors and suitable mapping information, we can easily represent say various information like the position, the velocity as well as say the magnitude of a given data in a three dimensional way. So, the diagram given here indicates an arrow and the various shades associated to these arrows indicate the magnitude as well as the direction in which it travels. Streamlines are normally used for representing velocity or flow of particles. They are sometimes represented even like a twisted ribbon to show the effect of rotations along a particular streamlined axis. Actually, this requires more graphical generation and more of vector graphics are essential for showing the time varying velocity field. Another uh, visualization technique is particulate or trace highlighting the mobility of various data points. We have textures highlighting the surface color, height and it may help in understanding additional information on the graphical primitive. Certain interactive adjustments on the parameter can also be useful for bringing out better results. We have two pictures here highlighting different textures and these textures highlight key areas in the given map. Another example for texture indicating various forest with the help of a world map. Another type of visualization is animation which is used for explaining time varying phenomenons. So, we can have certain data if it is associated to change with respect to time then animations can be used for representing it. And very recently virtual reality is another type of visualization technique used for highlighting data. So, in virtual reality say a computer generated image is used for simulating a given environment and real humans are immersed in that environment for the purpose of getting a realistic picture of the given context or the given environment. So, it is actually a realistic and immersive simulation of three dimensional 360 degree environment created using interactive software and hardwares that helps in experiencing a controlled movement of a given body. It is considered to be the best way by which you can visualize a given data or environment. In virtual reality, specialized devices are used for viewing the given data or the environment. For example, virtual reality headsets as shown here are essential for visualizing the given data. So, here this picture gives you an idea of a person wearing a headset virtual reality headset and visualizing say some data which is represented in the form of a tree structure. And last technique is data sonification wherein non speech audio are used for representing a given data. Variations in the data are highlighted by different non speech audio samples. To summarize data visualization has moved to the next level because of great growth in graphics. Graphics and animation techniques have made data visualization more interactive and interesting. Thank you.